Hi, my name is Stefan Kovach, Clinical Educator Emeritus here at Healthmark Industry, and I want to welcome you to our seven days of continuing education video series celebrating you, the medical device reprocessing professional, and all the hard work you do every day. You can work in a CPD, SPD, MD, RD, CSSD, and endo, a small clinic, ambulatory care, anywhere where you're reprocessing medical devices. This information is for you. Some say knowledge is power. We believe the real power is when we are all sharing our knowledge with others. That's what we're going to do over these next seven days is share our knowledge with you because you truly are the heartbeat of the hospital, reprocessing those medical devices every day, whether they're scopes or instruments or trays or cut down trays, it doesn't matter. You're doing a great job every day. So each day of CS Week 2023, Healthmark will release new educational videos worth one CEU. Yep, that's right. Seven CEUs in seven days, just as a thank you from all of us at Healthmark. Everybody at Healthmark wants to say thank you for doing a great job every day. We want you to keep this in your thoughts as you watch these videos. Remember that you are doing amazing things right now. Build on those successes to make change where change needs to be made. So how do you get that certificate? It's easy as one, two, three. One, watch the video. Two, click on the video link description. Three, take the quiz and pass it. It's that simple but we need you to do one more thing. Please fill out the feedback form so we can continue to improve. Tell us what you want to know and we will work on providing that information. So now relax, sit back and enjoy as we share our experience and knowledge with you. And again, we thank you for taking time out of your day to view the programs we have put together. Have a great CS Week 2023 and remember to always keep it clean. Take care. Bye now. Hello, this is Johan Azizi. I'm a special project manager with Healthmark. What we're going to talk about in this session is automation in endoscope processing using artificial intelligence in boroscopic inspection. Healthmark policy is basically to provide our customers and the healthcare community with the highest quality, state-of-the-art medical product and support services in a timely and cost-effective manner. This goal is supported by a staff commitment to indiv individual accountability, professionalism, mutual respect, collaboration, and service excellence. This presentation is part of that commitment, which is educating our customers. Health Park philosophy is that educated customer is our best customers. And as far as the disclosure, myself, I'm an employee of Health Mark Industries. We are in Fraser, Michigan. And we are a manufacturer and distributor of medical products to healthcare facility and healthcare professional. Obviously, no compensation has been received for this presentation. And all opinion expressed in this presentation are mine. And this presentation is, is not intended to be used as training or as a promotion. Overall, before using any medical device, review all the relevant packaging. Insert, in particular, paying close attention to indication, counterindication, warning and precaution. And basically, you need to follow the manufacturer IFU and requirement. Again, objectives for this presentation is that we're going to define enhanced visual inspection. We'll review standards and guidance that support boroscopic inspection. Going to identify solution for automation and endoscope processing. Going to explain the ways that automation can assist in implementation of quality management system, or QMS, for endoscope processing. And we're going to take a look at comprehensive demo of artificial intelligence software, in this case is Watchdog, and how to function in a clinical environment. So uh, overall, what is basic visual inspection? 
is the most basic verification of performance of cleaning process in by carefully inspecting the cleanness of instrument and material with naked eyes. And overall, all objects should be free of any remaining soil, deposit, pitting, and, and debris. In particular, for example, Olympus 190 duodunum scope IFU said that inspect all items and confirm no residual debris remain on the endoscope itself, on the channel plugs, distal and, fl distal and flushing adapter and injection tube. And if there are any debris remain, he said that repeat all of the chapter 5.5, which is said that manually cleaning the endoscope and accessories step in that process until none remain. On the other hand, enhanced inspection is using lighted magnification, going above and beyond looking with your naked eyes. SGNA so that may involve the use of magnifying glass or inspect with the, for the gross soil. So that visual inspection alone is not sufficient to determine cleaning adequacy in a narrow and internal channel of a scope and cannot detect microorganism or bioburden. That's Michelle Alpha published that in 2014. In addition to SGNA, there are FDA, CDC, ASG, SGNA, AMI, AOR, and Joint Commission, and various other organizations. They've been looking at this issue of cleaning and verification of the endoscope. Although they have the various degree of uh, items in it, but all major groups support, in principle, quality improvement, quality assurance, in particular, monitoring of the process that obviously that you make sure that clinically relevant and evidence-based practices are in place. Peer review literature, you need to look at those to see what happened. There is a lot of literature out there that uh, supports that what you need to do to make sure that you have a monitoring process for your cleaning and processing endoscope. There are research articles out there. Manufacturer IFU, we'll talk about one in particular in a few minutes. And, but this process has been dynamic and has been a long coming forward. One item in particular, Amy ST91, which was published uh, 2021, but actually was released on March 3rd of 2022, it took more than six years to come up with this document. And what it is is that basically contained the best practices for endoscope process in any setting Obviously, this one excludes TE and ultrasound probe and coincides with work with the TIR99, which is processing ultrasound probes and dilator. But this particular document, I'd recommend looking at that because it goes a little more detail of what you can do with your endoscope as for processing it. Some of the item that is talking about, since it's relevant to this presentation, is enhanced visual inspection and cleaning verification. It's talking about obviously part of the enhanced visual inspection is to, you need to dry the scope first. I'm going to show you in one of this uh, with the AI that when you have fluid in it, it's going to obviously uh, skew some of the, the item that's inside it. And obviously looking at the lighted magnification. Cleaning verification is talked about in, the, in this document that for the high risk endoscope, after each use, you need to be obviously look for are issues that it is, and if it needs to be sent for repair or evaluation, that's part of this document, that's part of the cleaning verification. And obviously, uh, it talks about boroscopic inspection, that you need to do channels, distal tip, valve opening, and in overall, in general, you need to follow the manufacturer of endoscope, I have used to what to inspect for. Again, looking at the SGNA standard, it said that there are several standards and practices has been in place that if you look at that, for example, standard of infection and reprocessing of flexible endoscope, it was published in 2018. You have a standard of infection provision in endoscope setting, 2019, and management of endoscope accessories, valve, and water irrigation bottle that was published in 2018 and guidelines for use of high-level disinfection and sterilant in the GI setting was published in 2019. 
Again, uh, SGNA looking at the, the guidance is talking about the nine steps of cleaning, uh, pre-cleaning, leak testing, manual cleaning, rinse after cleaning, and obviously visual inspection that include cleaning verification as part of that. Then obviously after you, you process it with high level uh, disinfection, either manual or automated, uh, rinsing it after that and drawing and storage. So those are some of the reprocessing that visual inspection that we have on that side. And in, in it, it said that visual inspection is an essential step, a safety step or timeout to ensure that the endoscope is visually clean before processing and use of magnification and adequate lighting. Use a camera or boroscope for inspecting the internal channel if available. And obviously, if you find debris, you need to report, repeat the manual cleaning and determine that if it's visibly clean. And uh, part of this process is obviously to remove damaged endoscope and accessories from service for repair and disposal. Okay, visual inspection that we talked about, enhanced visual inspection. We've been working on this flexible endoscope for more than a decade. And basically, as you see that FIS 007 is our seventh generation of flexible inspection scope. It basically allows you to visually inspect the lumen of the endoscope for damage or debris. And this style camera captures image and videos for for further review. And you can obviously look at the USB box, which you can record uh, videos and pictures and for further review. Or you could have a HDMI box, which is just for review that if you do not need uh, uh, the USB or software that sometimes we have some, some of our, our customers that they have difficulty adding software to their uh, computers, they can use the HDMI. And obviously with the various size of the endoscope that some of them that are okay with 1.9 millimeter diameter scope, but some that are smaller diameter lumen that we have a 1.06 diameter. So what are, are we actually looking for? The important part with that is to really get a baseline. So once you purchase an endoscope, if it comes in new, you need to take some photo of the baseline and keep those for future to see what happened over time. Is it, uh, are they getting damaged? Are the uh, instruments getting damaged? Or the residual soil is staying in it? And obviously, you need to review the latest research finding to help in decision of what critical and non-critical uh, for inspection. Overall, flexible endoscopes are really complex medical devices. They have long, narrow lumens. Many occlude the surfaces, which soil can stay in. And caps, valves become contaminated. Channel makes visual assessment difficult, unless using a boroscope. As you, you can see here, for example, in this one, there are many areas that debris can accumulate. So you have this bifurcate area that the breeze can actually go in and, and look at that. So, or, or the valve area. You have all these 90 degrees that is sometimes difficult to clean and you need to look at the magnification of boroscope to go inside this and make sure that all the debris are removed from those cannula. Uh, people have been using boroscope for more than 10, 15 years. I used I used started using a boroscope in 2009, but as you see, Olympus in uh, October 20, 2019 uh, released this uh, communication, and they said that uh, they are aware of that most of their customers are using uh, boroscope for inspecting inside the lumen, and they basically sent some photos that what a clean endoscope and what the scope that um, <coughs> some debris inside them. So here uh, in that document, it said that you have an endoscope that have issues that are clean, and then what happened when over time it start, the debris start accumulating. Or when the channel start getting crimps, and you have some issues here that you see a lot of crimping here. And when you have those crimping, <coughs> 
the material start accumulating in this area. And here, again, you can use a boroscope to look inside the distal and, and look inside the valve and other area. So Watchdog, uh, over the past several years, we have some of our customers that we are doing inspection, but we don't know <clears throat> what to look for. So we've been working on this Watchdog AI for several years, and what it does is automatically detect labels and count defect inside the flexible endoscope. What it does, it overcomes the guesswork and unreliability of the inspection. Keeps a record for future ins inspection and safely has stored all the information inside uh, the cloud. Notify manager or whoever you want to look at that and then make sure that the, basically the decision making is not on the frontline technician. It's easy to train the technicians and obviously is, uh, is a mean of a higher level of reliability. Once you have that system is, is kind of consistent no matter who does the, the inspection. And keep the inspection time at the minimum. One to three minutes you can inspect the scope and obviously create efficiency. Watchdog artificial intelligence detects one thirty of the second. That's four and a half times faster the human can look at that and identify scratches, peeling, crimps, droplet, and stain, and keeps the run, running count of the def defects by, by types. Create an inspection report in, instantly, which sa save that in cloud and send the report to the uh, hospital. So what we're gonna do here, actually look at doing a demo on the watchdog. So we, what we have to do, we're going basically and get the icon that we have here. And once the watchdog comes in, you log into it. And when you log into it uh, once in a day, then when you go back, you don't have to really do anything with that. Uh, what you can do once it's come at the beginning of it, you can actually go to this level on extra and add as many people as you want the email go to. It's, it's endless. You can add 10 people or 50 people in that, this email that you want the email go to. And what this email is, what this email does basically, it goes through the process and once the inspection is complete, send the email to those individuals, especially if you have the management or so, to make sure that uh, somebody pay attention to that. So in this case, for example, I have here three people in this, this report that is going to go to them. So what we're going to do is, once we have that, it's ready to go. And then what I'm going to do here is actually either scan the serial number here, or by clicking it one more time, I can actually type it into this place. So in this case, I'm going to type in the serial number 4578960. I just select the number. And once I have that, basically is ready to be inspected. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to here to basically insert this in this uh, channel here. So when we here, because you don't want to start the recording while you're outside the scope, otherwise it's going to look at those as issue. So once I'm here, I start pushing the end scope inspection. So when you click on that, you see that circle is going on. Right now, I'm going to start looking for deficiency inside this scope. So once it sees a deficiency, for example, here you see a D. That means this is a droplet, and it goes, it's going to count it. And as you look at the left-hand side, it's keep a tally of it by the color of what it's calling. So in this case, blue was the water, and you have the S for scratches. And then as we go, uh, we go in more stain crimps, so we find a crimp. Again, as he sees more and more of these, he's going to start tallying them and adding them to that finding. So it's, it's a finding on the side. You go back, and you see that is going that. Then as you see on the side, this green bar basically set up for three minutes. 
but most of my inspection been below that. That means you have three minutes to inspect this scope as, as you go forward. So you advance the scope, the borer scope at a steady base inside this working channel of the endoscope. You see that it finds the water droplet, the scratches, the stains, the crimps, and you can see that the 22 droplet, 211 stains, two crimps so far, 2011 scratches, and here it goes in and just add to those issues as we, we move forward inspecting this, this endoscope. So what we have here is, uh, I'm almost at the tip of this endoscope, and I'm not even half done with the three minutes that was set at the beginning of this uh, inspection. So here we are getting close to the tip of the scope. And once you reach to the end of it, you can see all those deficiencies that, that we identifies and kept track of it. So here we are getting towards the tip of the scope. And so far we have 70 droplet, uh, 458 stains, four crimps and 71 scratches. So once we received at the end of the scope, then what we do, we said stop inspection. So basically now we finish with the inspection. So it's gonna start uh, sending all those uh, report that we have to the cloud. And once reaches the cloud, then I would receive an email or whoever was on that email setting that uh, is a report attached, and what it does is picks up the, the 10 of the whatever photos it has and send them to us. The other thing that we have here is that, see, you see that uh, circle going on. Basically, that one is sending all that information to cloud, and then I should be getting an email. Once you receive the email, you can open it and look at it. But at the same time, you can come back here and actually either review the images or review the videos. One of the activities that we have, what we do, we do select uh, the video. In this case, we select this. We can either uh, review the entire video or say that, really, I'm not worried about the droplet or the stains. I'm going to look at. I'm lo going to look at items that I'm a little worried about. So what it does, once you go back, you see that next is going to go through all those videos. And so you can play it, or you can actually go and, and show me the, the issue that, that you found through in that inspection. So or you can actually go back, close this, and look at the individual photos of that, the images that you have for that particular report. So if you look at this today, you can look at individual photos to see what you, what you want to see. So you can go next and look at the various level. So what we are going to do, look at that uh, report that was sent to my email. So here we have the email. And then you can see that um, what was in the report of that. So basically what it does is say that you have, <coughs> you have how many scratches and how many stains. So the report said that watchdog report, it was today's date. And it said that you have uh, 75 droplet, scratches, droplet, peeling. And basically, uh, they had 360 images. And this is 10 out of that 360. And what we're going to do, we're going to go back to 
to the other screen and look at what we can see a little more detail. So here's a, another report similar to that. You can see that uh, this, uh, similar report that you have droplet, scratches, stain, and keep tally of them and how many you have. So you can get this report, make a decision based on what is inside the report. And for example, droplet, obviously, if this was a patient ready endoscope, you don't want any droplet of fluid in it. You need to send it back and dry it. Or if you have uh, crimps on it, then uh, you have to make a decision. Do you want to send that for repair? Because we know that the crimps are going to cause several issues. One, obviously, cleaning. And the other one, instruments can get stuck inside those, those crimp area and could harm uh, the, the device even further or you know, delay care to the patient. So here, what, what we have a little more closer look at that, it shows all the droplet of water. It shows some crimping and some stain. One of the things that when uh, various hospitals uh, do the inspection, and they see some stuff that look uh, like blood or some other items, and they cannot identify, they used to contact the manufacturer. And manufacturers, sometimes they were inundated with the calls of all these issues. What we have done with the uh, artificial intelligence, if we know, for example, there's a stain. In this case, if you look at that, for example, there's an 862 or 062, is written outside the jacket of one of the cannula. So in this case, for example, uh, uh, AI can exclude that. Uh, we know some of the manufacturers, for example, Olympus, have a red line on the outside of that. Uh, some people thought it was blood or something inside the, uh, the lumen. They cannulated. What we did, once we identify that those are the issues, we can actually uh, teach the AI to don't count those as deficiency. We were approached by another uh, endoscope manufacturer that in their process they use some adhesive that is in brownish or tan in color. So once AI identify those, what they can do actually to uh, don't count those. Look at those as part of the normal process of endoscope. And if there's a scratch or debris on top of that, <coughs> it could count those. So that's the advantage of the artificial intelligence. It learns constantly. As you move forward, you can teach the uh, issues with abnormality. Or if you have an issue internal, so as we can get more and more picture, uh, those uh, bucket of various items is going to get more enhanced and uh, more information going to come out of that. Part of this, uh, obviously, the inspection with boroscope and this artificial intelligence is really to reduce all the issues that have been reported to FDA mod, and, uh, mod database. What we have, Healthmark has uh, received the quarterly reports, which you organize them by the failure mode, for example, visual inspection. Uh, single-use endoscope, we have uh, cleaning verification issues that comes up, excessive force of devices, failure due to the reprocessed equipment, AER, for example, failed, endoscope malfunction, sterilization malfunction, use error. So what, what we have seen, this, this report, if you scan that uh, barcode, you can actually see the quarterly report. So the hope is, as we move forward, we can eliminate some of those. For example, if there's a crimping inside the endoscope, obviously, if you put that back in use, what's going to happen is that the instrument is going to get stuck in that. If you have anything that you deployed inside that working channel, is going to cause some issue with, with inside that, that endoscope. So it's important to really uh, look at them, do the processing, do the quality control, Make sure that you, you have some system with a boroscope uh, if you want to do it with, without the artificial intelligence. But we found out that artificial intelligence is really helpful, one, to streamline the process, remove some of the difficult decision making on the front line. And then at that point, that you really don't need an expert to do the inspection, because all they have to do is really uh, introduce the, the boroscope inside the channel, 
And then once you get a report, you can make a decision. Do you want to, what do you want to do with this endoscope? Do you want to keep it in use? Do you want to dry it? Do you want to send it for repair? Do you want to clean it again or if the scratches are excessive? So and another point with the artificial intelligence, leave really the decision making to the hospital, to the user to make sure that what it, if you can make that decision. Basically, what it does, it provides you with the information. Then you can use that information to, to do whatever you uh, part of your quality system and move forward with that. So, with that said, that you know we uh, we introduce this new technology to you, and then uh, if you have any question, please make sure to to contact me. Again, this is Jahan Azizi, J Azizi at healthmark.com. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marianne Drasnak, Director of Clinical Affairs here at Healthmark Industries. I'd like to thank you for watching today's CE program. If you got something out of today's video, please hit the like button and then be sure to subscribe to the Healthmark Education channel so you can know as soon as we post more educational content. By liking and sharing our videos and by subscribing to our channel, you are helping us grow. That way we can share the message of patient safety to more sterile processing and endoscopy processing communities, as well as our OR and IP partners. To get your 1CE certificate for viewing today's video, there is a link in the video description that will take you to the quiz. Just complete the quiz with a 70% or better, enter your name and email, and you will be issued a 1CE certificate immediately. You can download that certificate right to your device, or it will be emailed to the address that you provided. Thank you again for watching, and we hope you had a great CS Week 2023. Bye.